Well, Ma Ung Zani is a scholar of racism and genocide with the Genocide Documentation Centre and joins me now live from London. Good to have you with us. So uh, it's not the first time that Aung San Suu Kyi has been criticised for not doing more to protect uh, Rohingya. Uh, she set herself up as a human rights activist. So just to help us to understand, why isn't she doing more to protect Muslim Rohingya? Well... She is complicit in the genocide uh, because I shared a panel uh, with her in 2012 at the London School of Economics and she refused to address this issue. So I was pre-assigned to address this issue. That's why I think the world and particularly United Nations uh, Security Council and other, um, you know, august bodies uh, should uh, realize that Aung San Suu Kyi is herself culpable. She is siding with the, uh, the, the the Burmese military that is doing all the killings. Um, so, you know, to say that Aung San Suu Kyi has been silent on this issue is patently false. She is with the killers. Uh, it's interesting because you yourself are a Buddhist scholar, of course. Uh, Myanmar has been internationally condemned for its treatment of Rohingya. So what do you think should be being done to put pressure on Myanmar to do more for the uh, Muslim minority? Well, I mean, last week, United Nations Security Council met and failed to even come up with a single statement of concern. It is utterly pathetic. I mean, what we are seeing um, at the UN Security Council on the North Korea crisis, uh, you know, that is the kind of action uh, we need from the Security Council. The question is, is the Security Council less concerned about the genocide that is happening, uh, misframing as simply humanitarian crisis? Because the victims here are Muslims. And then my own late great uncle was deputy head of the uh, military command that uh, embraced the, um, you know, Rohingyas when the Burmese military was using the Rohingya against the Rakhine Buddhists in that region. And so I think Security Council is the place uh, where the action has to come from. Leading nations of Security Council are yet again failing the genocide uh, of uh, you know, gen another genocide after Srebrenica, after Rwanda, after Cambodia. You know, they are all making a mockery of the slogan, never again. And we also have and the situation where aid workers have been forcibly prevented from delivering aid to people in uh, Rakhine State. Many, many Rohingya trying to get across the border into Bangladesh. Bangladesh says it can't cope anymore. I mean, where is this all going to end? What impact is this going to have? Well, the impact is most profoundly felt uh, by the Rohingya community. I mean, this did not happen as a result of uh, Burma as multi-ethnic community or country opening up uh, commercially and politically. This started in 1978 when the Burmese military decided that, uh, you know, uh, among the 17 different types of uh, Muslim communities in Burma, the Rohingya with their own historical claim on their ancestral land next to the populous Muslim nation must be eradicated. I repeat, eradicated. They are, the military is pursuing and continuing its institutionalized policy of genocidal po persecution. I mean, like 90,000 Rohingyas uh, in 10 days fleeing, and also unconfirmed reports say that the Burmese army is shelling thousands of people who are in hiding, trying to run away from direct killings. And so I think, you know, the, the, the only intention that can be inferred from the Burmese military blocking aid to people that have nothing to eat for the, la for the last nine days is, is essentially genocidal. Maung, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Maung Zani there.